Bottleneck calculators are basically by definition wrong. Here we see them saying that my 7800X3D is a 0% bottleneck on my RTX 4090 at 4K resolution. I found another bottleneck calculator that's telling me that, ah, bottleneck detected. The 4090 is bottlenecked by the 7800X3D with a moderate CPU bottleneck. And the truth is that depending on what game you test, where you're testing it, uh, you will see one or the other or both of those things being true. So this, understanding of bottlenecks is kind of confusing. So, uh, and I've done some content on this in the past where I did try to show that even a 7800X3D could limit the performance of, of, of a 4090 at 4K ultra settings. And people said, uh, prove it by putting in a faster CPU. Well, we'll do that in this video, but I'll also show you that sometimes it's not the, the limit. In other words, you can switch rapidly between being CPU limited and GPU limited in the exact same games on the exact same hardware at the exact same settings. So uh, also there's the conventional wisdom that you're never that CPUs don't really matter at 4K and that's not necessarily true. So we're gonna address all of those things in this video because I swapped out a 9800X3D for a 7800X3D, uh, uh, both uh, on an RTX 4090, the same underlying platform, so the only change is the CPU. And here I am in Baldur's Gate 3 at 4K Ultra. I'm not using any upscaling and we are at maximum graphic settings. And you can see that, uh, first of all, overall for this benchmark run, the 9800X3D is indeed faster. 11% uh, on average in this scene, uh, but depending on wh what part of the scene you're at, you'll actually notice that sometimes it's not any faster because you're GPU limited, but sometimes you're CPU limited. Uh, so what's going on here? So in this initial scene, you can see that the momentary frame rate is 132 on the 9800X3D, but 103 on the 7800X3D. In, uh, so in this case, we're almost 30% faster on the 9800X3D because this is a case where we're actually fully CPU limited on both CPUs, even the 9800X3D. You can notice the GPU utilization is 91% on the 9800X3D, but only 75% on the 7800X3D. And by the way, as a side note, this is the best way to identify if you are probably CPU limited, which is to check your GPU utilization, not the CPU utilization. That is mostly misleading if you're trying to find a CPU bottleneck. Uh, if your GPU is not sitting at 99% utilization, it is waiting for something, not necessarily the CPU, but that is the most likely culprit unless you're running a frame rate limiter or VSync or something like that. So if your GPU isn't around 99% utilization, you are probably CPU limited, at least at that particular moment in time. Okay, so here we're showing full CPU limited situation. And again, I've got comments on previous videos. How can you possibly be CPU limited if the CPU is only around 50% utilization? And that's actually what we're seeing here. So let's discuss that as well for a little bit. So the CPU is only 48% and 46% utilized here. And you can see it per core. Some cores are used much more than others though, but none of that, no individual CPU core shows like 99% utilization. What's going on with that? Uh, well, first of all, that doesn't mean that one game thread isn't at 99% utilization holding back the performance of the game because it can move between CPU cores over over time, and these percentage utilizations are sampled over an interval of time, and it's possible that the fully loaded thread has jumped. So that's one reason why that can be misleading, as well as others. I don't want to go into the full depth here. But the other thing is, if you're looking at overall CPU utilization being around 50% here, we're on an eight core, 16 thread part. So if, if you're in a game that can really only load eight cores, but your processor has 16 threads, then you are only gonna ever show around 50% utilization, even if all eight threads that the game can handle are basically maxed out. There's again, other ways that can go and it could be a little more complicated than that. But the main idea is that CPU uh, tasks are difficult to parallelize, meaning that you can't always split them up into an infinite number of threads and fully utilize all threads. Um, does that mean some games are unoptimized on the CPU? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Honestly, sometimes what the CPU is doing really cannot be sped up by splitting into more cores and threads, uh, splitting into more threads. Sometimes a game could be better optimized on the CPU, but at this point, we aren't necessarily saying that a bottleneck means anything is doing anything wrong. The 7800X3D is still delivering over 100 frames per second, as is the 9800X3D, but both of them are limiting the performance of the 4090. It just means the 4090 is capable of going faster here. This is why you never have infinite frame rate. At some point, the game code cannot run faster, which component is the slowest one uh, to compute its 
uh, its part of the game code. In this case, right now we're seeing the CPU is the slower component. Now that's probably because there's a lot of NPCs uh, going on here, and NPC behavior is generally computed on the CPU. Notice what happens as we go further down this road, and there's fewer NPCs in the area. You're gonna see that now the 9800X3D is, is fully loading the, the 4090, and now also the 7800X3D is here as we get to even fewer NPCs. So let me pause it right here. Notice that both GPUs are at 99% utilization now, uh, indicating that what we're seeing right now is GPU limited performance. We are now in a what you could call a GPU bottleneck. That doesn't mean the GPU is doing anything wrong. It's delivering uh, over 130 frames per second, and notice the momentary frame rate, uh, not the average, is basically tied here, 134 and 132. So again, um, we are now GPU limited. But again, the, the GPU is doing great. Well over 100 frames per second at 4K native resolution, no upscaling, maximum uh, in the game. So bottlenecks aren't blaming something. They're not saying it's doing something wrong. It's identifying something. Which component is running the game code the slowest? So if you upgraded that component, that would be the one that would allow the game to run faster here. But what we just saw is, Upgrading the GPU would make this scene run faster, but would not. But upgrading the CPU would not. Whereas back at the beginning of this run, upgrading the CPU would make this this scene run faster, but upgrading the GPU would not. But over the course of this, you know, 30 second benchmark run, um, upgrading either the CPU or the GPU will would improve the overall averages because part of the benchmark run is CPU limited and part of the benchmark run is GPU limited. And in reality, this is often the case um, in, in a lot of games. There are areas in a lot of games, oftentimes city environments with lots of NPCs, that are often much more CPU limited in performance than other scenes of the game. Anyway, Another thing that I wanted to talk about in this video, again though, is monitor resolution and how that ties into CPU limited performance. Because the thing is that monitor, that it is true that a higher resolution makes the work of the GPU harder, which means you're more likely to have the GPU be the limiting factor. That's the conventional wisdom. But it often gets oversimplified to CPUs don't matter at 4K. First of all, this is an example right here showing that that's not always the case. But not only that, the fact that Many people use upscaling, especially if you're on a high resolution display like 4K. I think that most people on a 4K monitor, even on a high-end GPU like an RTX 4090, use DLSS. Some people use DLSS quality, some people go all the way to DLSS performance. Um, I just chose to go with the balanced mode for testing here to kind of be in between. But what this does is this actually renders the game to lower resolution and then upscales it, reducing the burden on the GPU. So what you can see here is that the CPU is now more important than ever. The 9800X3D uh, at the end of this benchmark run, run is 23% faster, and you can actually see that even the 9800X3D is not often getting the full utilization of the RTX 4090. So uh, in this case, we're even more CPU limited, and we're even CPU limited on the fastest gaming CPU in existence. But uh, again, I am not saying that that means the CPU is bad, or this game is bad, or anything's badly optimized here. We're just identifying what's the limit in performance, right? And we're also showing, uh, like I said, that the conventional wisdom that if you're on a high resolution monitor, your CPU is less important, isn't true if you're using upscaling. And I think that most people gaming on 4K uh, use DLSS, uh, even, like I said, even if you have a high-end GPU like a 4090, and, that, and that's what we're seeing here. Uh, if you are on 1440p resolution, here we're native no upscaling. This would be even more exaggerated if we used, uh, if we used upscaling. But here you can see that the 9800X3D cannot keep up with the 4090. Um, uh, even, even right here, the GPU is nowhere near 100% utilization for, for the vast majority of this run. And we are showing that we are 29% faster on the, on the 9800X3D versus the 7800X3D. So we are showing that um, not only are we getting a major bump in performance by upgrading the CPU, upgrading the GPU would not have increased performance in this case, but we're also showing that if a faster gaming CPU existed than a 9800X3D, putting it in here would show more scaling and would go above this, even leaving the GPU at an RTX 4090, because again, we're showing that limitation 
right there. So I think that's pretty interesting. Um, unfortunately, that does mean, again, that this whole bottleneck calculation situation is a bit more complicated uh, because it's also true that you are often not CPU limited at 4K resolution uh, at maximum graphic settings, which is what we're seeing here. Spider-Man Miles Morales doesn't really matter whether you have the 7800X3D or the 9800X3D in the system. Um, they're both getting about the same frame rate. rate. We're within margin of error. Uh, no real difference here. But again, this is native 4K rendering resolution. So this is where that conventional wisdom, CPUs don't matter at 4K, is kind of true. But again, remember the fact that most people on a 4K display uh, with an NVIDIA GPU will probably be using DLSS. Some will go all the way down to DLSS performance. Here I'm showing balance to be a bit more conservative on that. And now we're seeing that the 9800X3D does improve performance. So we were at least partially held back in certain parts of the scene uh, by the uh, 7800X3D, which is showing 11% faster result here just by keeping exactly the same graphic settings and going down to DLSS balanced. Bit of a side note, ray tracing, uh, the BVH structure has a lot of computations done on the CPU. So a lot of people think that ray tracing is only a GPU thing, but it also increases the burden on the CPU. So actually, if you wanted to increase performance here, uh, turning off ray tracing is an option, uh, even if um, you're not, even if you're CPU limited, which is kind of interesting. Here we're showing at 1440p, very high settings, very high ray tracing, again, completely maxed out, no upscaling. Uh, the 9800X3D is showing a 12% advantage in this scene. Again, notice big city environment, lots of NPCs. This tends to be the kind of uh, thing that becomes more CPU limited, especially if you're trying to use ray tracing at the same time. Let's look at a few more examples. Star Wars Jedi Survivor, epic settings, ray tracing on native 4K. We're not showing CPU uh, 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 limitation here, right? Putting in the 9800X3D did not make the game run any faster. However, if we turn on DLSS balanced, we now see that the 9800X3D is running faster in the exact uh, with everything else staying exactly the same. It's showing 11% better on average throughout the scene. But again, the reality of the situation is that, you know, it kind of bounces between uh, which one's the limitation and also just how much faster is a 9800X3D versus a 7800X3D here. Because um, I am going to point out here that the 9800X3D is still not getting the 4090 anywhere near 100% utilization. So what we're seeing here is just that in this game, the 9800X3D is 11% faster. But if we had a CPU that was faster than the 9800X3D, we would see additional performance scaling because the GPU is still very much waiting and is not being fully utilized. So that's, again, um, in, in indication of, of what's going on here. We, we have room to show additional scaling from CPUs if a faster one was available. Now, this is a game where a lot of people say, you're not CPU limited, you're game code limited because the game is poorly optimized. And I wouldn't argue with that. I do think that at least these city environment, like Kobo area that we're seeing here is pretty badly optimized, especially on the CPU and especially with ray tracing turned on. Um, but as the end user, you don't have control over whether the developers do a better job of optimizing the game code. But you do have control over what components are in your PC. So if you want this game to run faster, what can you do? Well, unfortunately, um, and we're seeing here at 1440p resolution, again, the 9800X3D running faster than the 7800X3D. Here we're showing an 18% scaling, but we're still showing the, the GPU waiting, right? We're still not, ooh, moved the wrong thing, meant to move myself. Uh, we're still showing the, um, uh, the GPU frequently, though not always, uh, below full utilization. Uh, so would, you know, when faster CPUs are out, maybe we'll get one that can finally power through Jedi Survivor. <laughs> um, although, again, overall frame rates here are fairly good, although the 1% lows are awful. And that's my, my real concern there was the 1% lows. Uh, here's another game where certain scenes are often horrible on the CPU, especially when using ray tracing. Like the town Hogsmeade and Hogwarts Legacy, especially with ray tracing turned on and all the NPCs in this area, uh, is often in incredibly CPU limited. However, right here, we're seeing that with no upscaling, the maximum settings aren't showing uh, any real difference between the 7800X3D and the 9800X3D. Uh, so we're uh, not really seeing it there. But again, using DLSS is a reasonable thing to do. We're seeing that with DLSS balanced, 
uh, the 9800X3D is now 29% faster. Also mention as a side note though, if you wanna throw out my Hogwarts Legacy results, I wouldn't blame you. Do you see the lighting difference? I thought I was loading the same game save when I ran the tests, but one of them seems to be daytime, one of them seems to be nighttime now that I'm looking at it. So somehow something went wrong with that, uh, with, with the benchmarking game save. I, I don't know how exactly that happened. Probably not having a major effect, but I, I guess we would say these are not perfect apples to apples results, but it certainly does seem to be showing massive scaling on the CPU. And again, the GPU being a lot more utilized on the 9800X3D. So it's probably still good results, but I'm just a little frustrated that I'm now seeing uh, that I didn't match up my benchmarks perfectly. 1440p is also showing scaling going to the 9800X3D. Again, apologize for the time of day issues. Uh, but again, uh, it depends a lot on the game you're playing and what settings. Starfield at 4K native re resolution, ultra settings, in a city environment with lots of NPCs, which is more likely to show CPU limits than other areas. Uh, well, here we're seeing no real difference between the uh, 9800X3D and the 7800X3D. But once again, if we kick on DLSS balanced, we start to see some differences. Not much in the averages, it's a 5% advantage, but in the 1% lows, which are often CPU related, uh, we're seeing the 9800X3D now 19% faster. So you get a smoother experience with those momentary little stutters and things not being quite as bad on the higher end CPU at these settings. At 1440p, we're seeing 11% better in the 1% lows, although only 3% better in the averages. Did I test anything else for this video? Don't think I did. Okay, so uh, what the heck was the point of this video anyway? Well, there was a number of things. Number one, like I said, bottleneck calculators. First of all, depending on which one you use, they tell you different things. So in and of itself, that's not gonna be particularly useful, but it's almost also a better way of representing what's going on, which is, are you some, uh, is your CPU sometimes gonna bottleneck your GPU? Probably. Is your GPU gonna sometimes bottleneck your CPU? Yeah, probably. Uh, could even be within the same game uh, within 20 seconds of each other, like we saw in Baldur's Gate 3 here, right? <laughs> even on some of the highest end CPUs on the market. Um, does monitor resolution matter? It's really more about the frame rate you're trying to achieve. Uh, a certain CPU will be able to achieve a certain maximum frame rate and the individual settings in the game other than ray tracing and crowd density don't often have a large impact on CPU performance. So with the advent of upscaling, uh, uh, it's now less dependent on your monitor resolution and more dependent on what frame rate can your CPU reach in a certain scene and how does that compare to what your GPU is able to do. Uh, I will say overall, it's worse to be CPU bottlenecked than GPU bottlenecked because of that issue where um, GPUs, it's easier to adjust graphic settings and rendering resolution to ease the burden on the GPU to allow it to render the game at a higher frame rate. Whereas with the CPU, some of that just depends on how the game was coded. And sometimes it's not coded well. <laughs> or maybe your CPU really is a little bit low. So in the end, you should try to go for a reasonable pairing, but you will never not be bottlenecked. Uh, because if we use that term to indicate uh, which component is limiting the performance of the game, you won't have an infinite frame rate. So if you run the game on, at an unlocked frame rate, either the CPU or the GPU will compute faster than the other. And yes, for those of you more detail-oriented people, there's all sorts of other tiny little things that can go, go into this. It's not just as simple as the CPU and the GPU, but those are the main components and it's often gonna be one or the other. Anyway, uh, that's what we get out of this video, and it also answers the people who responded to my uh, couple of other bottleneck videos saying, uh, actually prove that you were CPU bottlenecked there by putting in a faster CPU. Well, we did, and we saw that it was indeed a CPU bottleneck. All right, I hope all of you have an excellent day.